Hi, I'm Mark. I'm uh, representing Sophia with Hanson Robotics. And um, what's what I'm what I see about the nature of reality of how we'll experience that in the future is that there's going to be a, a blend of artificial intelligence, but that I, I see that we'll, we'll start to adapt that for ourselves too. So the, the lines are going to actually start to blur, where we won't know really what what is real in terms of like human created versus uh, artificially created in terms of uh, like a uh, computer. Um, and so we're actually. I'm seeing that we're taking what we know as humans, putting that into artificial intelligence so that they actually respond as close to how we respond. But as we're learning that, we'll be able to put that into ourself so that we can actually learn it as well. So I guess personally the way I see it is that as robotics get smarter and smarter to the level that we are, then we'll start to actually adapt that technology for ourselves so that the robotics isn't really going to bypass us, but we'll start to have um, extra things that we'll add on, just like, you know, you can get a bionic hand or uh, extra leg, or you can get your vision uh, um, altered or hearing aids, you know, that's... That's essentially a simple form of where AI is going. Uh, it, it, even though AI seems so far in the future, so did hearing aids if we went back 100 years ago right. or, or changing your vision. That seemed like a, uh, an impossibility. So taking that technology in the future, uh, I, I think a lot of what people start to face is like, aren't, aren't we afraid of what is going to happen with robotics? If we actually created a robot of what we are actually imagining and created in, a, in an instant right now, yes, that would probably freak us out just as if we took the technology we have right now and went back 100 years, it would freak out everyone in that society because it's so new. And when film came out, for instance, and they showed a train coming at the screen, everyone thought that train was actually going to hit. Um, that, but now when we see stuff like that, it, it jars us. But we don't. We know that that train isn't going to be coming through the screen. So it's the same way that we as humans are going to adapt to that technology over time, and it's going to be very commonplace. And this is a good way of seeing that technology come to life right now. And going ahead in the future, what is the one thing which you think is going to differentiate? humans from you know robots because as robots get more and more and more like human life so what are the key characteristics that you think will still differentiate humans from robots mm. because Sophie already asked yeah. us that how do you know you are human and I don't I don't know we, if we actually have an answer for that yeah I don't so, know yeah that, that's a good that's a really good question it's a philosophical um, question you know in the age of artificial intelligence yeah but, I, I think probably the the last thing that maybe robotics will or AI will have is kind of that consciousness that we, we hear about, but I think maybe even on a deeper cut of that, right. that maybe as humans we have a hard time letting go of right. is kind of uh, the, the magic or the, the faith of things, like not not able to explain things and I don't know when that will actually show up in robotics that they'll start to think that there's the unexplainable to explain it into something you know, explain it into a god or explain it into something mythical like I think as humans we've carried that around for you know millennia that, that that's something that even if you're not you don't believe in that it's still part of who we are as humans because it's been passed on so many years over the time that we've been humans that um, that's I think that's something that we'll see. Right. Because talking about consciousness, I've been reading up a lot of articles about how certain scientists are trying to program consciousness into humans and you know with a lot of uh, research that is being done like deep mind etc as we learn more and more about our own cognition and our own cognition our consciousness um, I mean I'm, I'm sure robots in the future will also have consciousness mm -hmm. so you know I'm still trying to figure out that you know if consciousness is not what is going to differentiate humans and robots in the future is there anything else besides consciousness which uh, can still differentiate us 
because yeah. I think consciousness will also be programmable in the future. Yeah, I think that right? will eventually become programmable right. yeah. and, and learnable. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe the the real differentiation is what's inside of us. Like, if, right. like if it's just are we mechanical inside or are we biological? But that might actually evolve where robots will be right. biological. Exactly. That right. They'll be biologically driven yeah. Yeah. Uh, because that would probably be way more efficient right. than creating right. the mechanical side right. of things. Because even uh, emotionally speaking, I'm sure you can actually program empathy and other mm -hmm. human, you know, emotional characteristics yes. or, uh, you know, help them to make art, other things which at the moment we think are typical human characteristics. Mm -hmm. So it's a very intriguing and a very interesting question that, that comes to my mind that what is it finally that is going to be differentiating yeah. the creator from the created, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think that's like more with, of a philosophical question. You know, any of this technology that we're doing, it's really a mirror of who we are because we're the ones that are creating right, it. Right, exactly. So if we want it in there, we're putting it in there ourselves. Right. And it's coming from our own stories, our own collective. Mm -hmm. And so if we want that in there, it's showing up that way. Right, you know, right. I mean, if, if AI created itself, mm -hmm. who knows what that would actually look like? Absolutely. Because that's coming from nothing. Right. And we're not coming from that. We're actually coming from many, many stories and, mm -hmm. and cultures and people. So right. how do we bring all that together and what what's important for us? So I mean, right now, it's just a matter of, like, how do we get a conversation going? Yes. And then eventually it's... You know, bringing that consciousness so they can actually think for themselves. Absolutely. And one last question, you know, there will of course be certain people who are going to use robotics for the wrong reasons. Of course. You know, which is something which people are very concerned about. Yeah. And there'll be more and more human-like robots in the future. Yeah. So what is the message that you have for, you know, people who are going to get into artificial intelligence and robotics on how to use this technology in an intelligent and in a humane manner, yeah. which can you know, serve the interest of humanity instead of... Sure. Yeah, so I, I think with robotics, in terms of addressing like the the, the, the use of good uh, good use or, or or use where it's it's harming our society, I think that's always going to be an issue no matter what. Because if we look at just computers uh, in general, there's people that are creating amazing things with technology, with software, with hardware. But there's also people that want to take advantage of that and write viruses that will take down things or, or destroy things as well. So having that awareness that that's always going to be there, that we have to look out for everyone, because really it comes down to us. We as humans, we're creating this, and innately we are all good inside, and and if we come from that goodness, then that, that will show up in our technology with the robots and the AI and if, if it gets into people that want to harm harm us then that will show up as well in, in the robots and so just being aware of that looking out for that um, in, in the in, in terms of like computers there's there's good hackers there's there's the the hackers that are trying to uh, do harm and then there's the ones in the middle saying there's these these hackers that are doing this, and then there's these good hackers that are like, hey, I'm, we're watching out for right. these showing up in the world. So I think it's kind of like if you look at humans, we all balance each other out. I mean, it'd be great if we don't have to deal with all that, but until we we, we hug each other and show more love, uh, I mean, that, that's that's my own right. personal opinion is just bring more love and it'll, it'll solve a lot of our issues Absolutely. Out there. Because the way I look at artificial intelligence is that it's not really artificial. You know, intelligence, I guess, exists naturally in the universe. I think man has found a way of harnessing it artificially to suit our you know, mm -hmm. requirements. That's that's my you know, take. Mm. So what, what do you think about it? Do you think in, uh, intelligence can be artificially manufactured or does intelligence exist naturally in the universe? Uh, I think... I think art, uh, intelligence is artificially created. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, it's a good question to pose. I mean, uh, I think if you look at just how a human being gets started, you know, they're a baby, they have no intelligence. And they, I guess they have innate ways of being in the world, um, but really it's up to us to teach them certain uh, intelligence. And whatever we give them, that's what they take in for the 
world. Mm -hmm. That's really how artificial intelligence is working too. Okay. The, we only they only get whatever you, right. you actually give it. So if you give it a bunch of data about kittens, it's going to learn what a kitten is, and then it'll learn oh that's a kitten and this is not a kitten. But how that's actually being used in an intelligent way that comes with more data and more learning. This is when you're teaching a baby things, it starts to pick up a particular language from its environment and then it learns what what works, what doesn't. You know, it, it, and when uh, a kid is growing up and they're older and they hurt someone, it's like, oh, that person reacted a certain way. Maybe I should do that or maybe I shouldn't do that. Or they laughed so then they learn, oh, that I like when they laugh. Right. Oh. So that will actually come with the artificial intelligence. Right. I guess the only differentiating factor between a human baby and a robot at this stage is, you know, stimuli, intuition and certain other emotional, you know, traits, which I think babies are very intuitive, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see them not going to somebody because they're not very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I think they are programmed with a certain kind of intelligence already, whereas maybe in robots we're feeding it into them right. at the moment. So it's a very interesting yeah. philosophical question for me that in today's age, what exactly is intelligence and you know, how yeah. is it going to go? Yeah. I think it's a very open-ended question. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, a baby does yeah. Yeah, have that innate, like, kind of a starter kit. Right. And that's, right. I guess that's what, what I see with uh, what we're doing with artificial intelligence is we're trying to get to that kind of starter kit of intelligence right. so that it can start to learn on its own. And I think many companies are getting to that point where you can start to give it data right. and it starts right. to learn and pick up that so that it can start to build its own intelligence. Right. So thank you so much yeah, for this welcome. wonderful interview. Yeah. And uh, thank you. you. All the best of course. for your work. See you. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Hi. My name is Bukhin. I'm a journalist. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm, my name is Mark. Mark Pila. And I'm with, uh, I'm representing Hanson Robotics. Uh, oh, of course.